The term piercer, in reference to emergency warning lights, commonly refers to the piercer 2 option for the center of wheel and light bars, usually the edge, sometimes the advantage, uh, consisting of two rapid fire strobes, usually in clear. They're commonly seen in 1990s light bars. But is that really all it refers to? In the early 80s, a device called the Piercer, not Piercer 2, Piercer, uh, was shown in a wheel and release. It consisted in that case of a PAR 46 sealed beam strobe bulb in a cast housing. Uh, literature also mentioned that other light heads could be substituted. The question becomes, how was it powered? What did it do? It was seen up until the late 80s, early 90s when the Piercer 2 debuted. Um, here we see what I commonly think of as an example, and it's powered by using the trigger of two strobe heads to power the single one. Uh, they were very specific about the 120 double flashes per minute, and the only way to achieve that with the power supplies of that era was to modify them internally or externally by combining two heads into one. But were they really powered this way, or were they self-contained? The 23, 50, 46, and 56 represent a cast housing with a sealed beam that also contained its own power supply. These were manufactured starting around the same time, maybe a little bit earlier. Here we see an example of a power supply mounted in the cast housing. In fact, many Whalen cast housings for PAR 46 and 56 bulbs contain the standoffs which would be used to mount these power supply boards. The question is, were these really the original piercer or was the piercer in fact remotely powered? There's no debate that cast housings with power supplies internally existed and there really should be no debate that that was a product that was offered in other forms as well. Uh, the Solo Strobe, which debuted in 1987, uh, actually right around the time that the self-contained PAR versions were discontinued, was one of the longer running products from 1987 to close to 2007. Uh, that was a four times three strobe within a cast housing with its own power supply. In fact, they were manufactured for so long that they started out in strobe 2, double flash, and by the end of their production run, they were multi-pattern. Um, the examples shown here, the amber one is comet flash or quad strobe, and the blue one is double flash. Um, they utilized at first the internals of the Dash Master series strobes, and later they got their own potted power supply. While the PAR 46 and 56 self-contained cast lights were discontinued around the time that the Solo Strobe debuted, the question becomes, were they synonymous with the Piercer, or were they separate product offerings? I would maintain that the Piercer is a totally separate product. Um, the Solo Strobe, I think, reinforces that, that Willen did like to offer cast housings with self-contained power supplies, and that the piercer was specifically marketed as being a remote unit. Uh, in fact, some of the literature says that uh, any clear strobe head could be substituted for the PAR-46. So the PAR-46 really wasn't required to be a piercer, per se. That said, the Solo Strobe product is pretty interesting. It does something that isn't necessarily intuitively a very popular thing. It's a single directional light in a weatherproof cast housing and it doesn't synchronize with other light heads. It can be mounted on a swivel or mounted on a bumper mount or mounted on a crossbar but it isn't really something that you would think would be one of the longest running strobe products that Whalen offered. The slow motion footage here just goes to demonstrate the 
original double flash and then the later comet flash versions uh, representing a pretty broad time span and the comet flash wasn't even the last one offered so piercer versus 53 50 46 and 56 you can see that the 56 was due to be discontinued in 1984 and 85 the 46 self-contained was due to be discontinued 85 86 and we know that the piercer was produced all the way through 89 or 90 so more evidence that these are not the same product um, there's also the nagging issue that the initial release says a max beam strobe head could be used instead um, even here it says other strobe uh, head assemblies are optional optional strobe light head assemblies available so really the piercer was the speed um, and the fact that it was a clear single light it really wasn't referring to the housing um, the universal power supplies available at the time were able to do a variety of different numbers of heads um, however a single light system and a two light system were pretty limited um, a single head would give you 60 double flashes a two head would give you 120 so the only real way to get the 120 out of a single light head would be to combine them um, combine the triggers like this externally that means the white wire would be run from both heads or both outlets rather to the same head um, that would be if that's not done like shown here you get your 60 flashes per minute which is half of the reported rate of the piercer so simply by running the light as intended here with a max beam which they did state was an option you don't get the rate that was reported for the piercer you get exactly half that rate in double flashes per minute um, it's why my theory that a regular power supply um, was just modified kind of holds up to the rate scrutiny at least so there'd be a couple ways to do this um, like I said you could combine them externally like I've done with the trigger wires or you could simply combine it internally in a similar way uh, some of the documentation does state that it uses a special strobe power supply. Now, does that mean special because we've ganged the triggers together on the outside with a special plug? Or does it mean like special in the sense that that's been done internally? Um, this is a diagram of those two methods. It just is a matter of where the triggers would be grouped together for that single light head the outcome would be essentially the same it would perform the exact same way you're running one light head with the out on the outlets meant for two light heads and this is how I've done my example you've got uh, a trigger wire from both outlets going outside of the power supply and joining uh, instead of being joined inside but again that's kind of not important as far as how it was structured uh, Whelan has used the term special products for things that are as simple as plugs in the past so it could have been that simple so here if you do combine that trigger wire like we see and plug them plug the same single strobe light head into both outlets of the power supply you do end up getting the 120 flashes per minute double flash and it doesn't really cause any significant uh, problems there's a little bit of extra heat um, but very survivable, very usable. Um, would it look cleaner to be done inside? Yes, uh, it probably would. I've never seen a power supply where it was combined inside. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Um, it also doesn't mean that it didn't start out as a plug assembly and then later turn into an internal modification. If anybody has a power supply for a first generation piercer, or a plug assembly or anything that would show us exactly how they wired those I would like to see it because it's been my impression that it was done via wiring not power supply but there has been some anecdotal uh, evidence given lately that perhaps maybe the uh, power supply itself was altered and only had a single outlet much like the power supply for a uh, commander beacon uh, 5000 series but 
had doubled the flash rate by combining actually two heads on the inside. Um, the bulb that you use would be your choice, like the literature says. So what we run through here in the video is essentially just a couple of different common traffic clearing light bulbs. Um, the max head or the max strobe head uh, and two different par 46 beams, uh, one in the cast housing with the clear optics or lack of optics and then one in the ring housing uh, with the fluted optics. So you can take a look at those and, and see how effective you think they are even though the camera maybe doesn't necessarily do them justice. The remaining five minutes of this video is comprised of showing the double flash, 120 flashes per minute, two outlets to one head concept with the max beam um, and the par 46 sealed beams at different speeds, angles, lighting conditions. There's not a whole lot of information out there other than the catalogs that I've already displayed that really give a definitive answer as far as what was the mode of powering these light heads. But I would pretty firmly state that I do not believe the internal power supply cast housing par 46 and 56 light heads were what Whelan considered the piercer. Um, neither of those seem to have power supplies that would produce the 120 flashes per minute and Whelan's own literature seems to state that the power supply is the piercer part of the setup um, and that you can use a variety of different clear strobe heads. So while the self-contained cast housings with their own power supplies are interesting and I would love to get my hands on one, um, I think those lived on as the solo strobe and by date we can kind of show that that when the self-contained PAR products went away the solo strobe took over um, whereas the piercer we can show that when the piercer went away um, in 1989 or 90 shortly thereafter the piercer 2 was an option on the wheel and edge bar and then on the advantage bar so the beginning and end of the self-contained cast product line seems to progress from sealed sealed beam par 4656 to solo strobe whereas the piercer product line seems to start as flash rate of power supply with your choice of light head and then naturally continue on to be the dual white not always white but usually white center option for the edge light bar so enjoy the rest of the footage and uh, leave me a comment if you have any additional information uh, if you have any of the products uh, other than the solo strobe um, and you'd like to provide them show them etc uh, there's a couple active discussions on elightbars.org or leave a comment and enjoy the footage <laughs>